Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I just read Ghosts of Barak Minos by Guy Haley, and it's pretty cool. Ghosts of Barak Minos is the second novel in the Drake Flynn series, and follows the same dwarves we followed in Arkanaut's Oath. During the first book, one of their members fell overboard and was presumed to be dead. However, it now turns out that he actually managed to survive. His sanity, however, has not, and rambling on about how he fell through the mythical dead air, Drekki spots an opportunity amongst his ramblings as this airspace is rumored to contain the lost city of Barak Minos. By extrapolating from the finding place and the ramblings of Eftor, they set on on a quest to find Barak Minos and the riches it is rumored to contain. Yet if you want to know if they managed to get there in one piece, if the rumors of the Night Hunt infestation are true, and if you want to see a dragon fighting yetis, then you will have to read this novel for yourself. Just like the first novel, the best part of this book is the carrot drawn humor and the banter between the crew members. Sure, there's a serious adventure going on and there are plenty of serious moments too, but just like in Guardians of the Galaxy, this is mixed with a good dose of humor. What I really appreciate with the humor in this book is how typical it can often be for the factions featured. Caradron, for an example, often make ridiculous statements because they're all greedy bastards, and a dragon with an ego complex is also perfectly on brand. This novel also sees the return of the often comedic footnotes. This book contains plenty of Caradron words with a little number next to them that you can look up at the end of the book. In the EPUB version at least, you will find a little dictionary at the back with tongue-in-cheek explanations for what all of these terms mean. But just as for the first book, I feel like it's a bit of a double-edged blade. Sure, they are funny and it is nice to learn a bit of character it speak, but it also breaks the flow of the book a bit, as you have to look them up and find again where you were originally, and so on and so forth. But yeah, there's about 70 of them in the entire book, so it's not as if you spend hours flipping back and forth either. One thing I did like is that we get a lot more of the crew dynamics in this book. For an example, there's a new dwarf that joins and he gets a little arc with him basically being an Arkanaut intern. We get a very sweet romance story, there are some mixed feelings about the last book's trader who tries to earn back their trust, and of course there's the question of Eftor, whose mind might have broken beyond repair. Sure, Drekki is a main character and there's an interesting plot, but in this novel you do also care a lot about the rest of the cast and their character arcs. Talking about the plot, it is a bit of a conundrum, because on one hand it is quite interesting and intriguing, Yet on the other hand, this book suffers heavily from a second book of a trilogy syndrome. I feel like the original book ended pretty conclusively, but this book sets up more questions than answers. Of course, I can't go into depth for spoiler reasons, but outside of the mini plot lines regarding the crew of the Isling, the book feels a lot like Doom Part 1. Little resolution, but a lot of setup. That being said, the events that we do see in this novel were really cool. Barak Minos and the road to the place are filled with mystery and legend. Our Molly crew gets to explore this, and it has a very nice adventure mystery feel to it. The later half of the book also sees a lot of twists and turns that make sure to keep you guessing about what will happen next. Then finally, this book also gets a bonus point for its portrayal of dragons. In this novel, the crew eventually meets up with a dragon and they plan to work together with him. On one hand, these beings are powerful and can be quite intelligent, yet they are also very self-absorbed and lazy. After all, they can just fly away from danger. They lack natural predators, and even the dark forces struggle to take down or corrupt them. I think Haley perfectly captured what a being such as this could be in terms of personality, and he was an excellent addition to the novel. Altogether, Ghosts of Barak Minos gets 4-5 to five Caratron oil tankers. This novel sees an enjoyable pirate crew set out on an entertaining adventure. The humor is nice, there's a dragon, and the various members of the crew get plenty of screen time. Yet I think this book doesn't reach the same heights as the first one for two reasons. One is the fact that there's a lot of setup that doesn't get resolved. The other being that we see much less interesting world building. Book 1 featured all sorts of Order faction members, such as Stormcasts and humans. This led to a lot of interesting clashes in beliefs and personalities, whereas this book only really focuses on Caradron specifically. But yeah, definitely a recommendation for people who enjoyed the first book, and a must read for Caratron fans. You've reached the end of this Vox message. If this sparked your pleasure centers, make sure to anoint the subscribe button. Thank you for visiting Bartholoran. May the Omnissiah be with you.